Well, good evening, VC. This is a pretty green vinyl guy here. And uh, today I want to do a different video. Um, I'm actually going to focus on Canadian music for the next little while. And um, kind of got the idea from uh, Trigger Boy Vinyl in Australia. I like how he's doing stuff on uh, Aussie artists. So uh, I was thinking there's some amazing Canadian artists that people out in the VC aren't going to necessarily know because not all music gets, you know, distributed everywhere and sometimes if you don't know what you're looking for. So I want to share um, some Canadian music and I thought the perfect place to start was a band that in Canada, they're just iconic. There are probably the most loved band to come out of Canada for many, many years. And sadly, the lead singer died uh, two weeks ago uh, by the, a guy by the name of Gore Downey. The band I'm talking about is The Tragically Hip. And uh, The Tragically Hip are a band out of uh, Kingston, Ontario, just north of uh, Toronto. And um, <clears throat> they formed in the late 80s. And uh, this is their third album that we're going to talk about. And uh, this is Fully Completely. This was their best-selling album. And on most lists where, you know, you uh, see rankings, ratings for top albums by Canadians, this one typically is in the top five, and on a list I was just looking on, it was the number three most cherished album by a Canadian artist in Canada. So yeah, so we're talking about the Tragically Hip, and we're talking about Gord Downey. So Gord was the uh, singer-songwriter, and uh, you know, we, we consider him a poet here in Canada. He had a way of connecting with Canadiana, which was a blessing. And, uh, and in some ways hurt the band's popularity and success outside of Canada. Uh, a lot of the content on the albums really focus on strong Canadian themes, strong Canadiana. And I think that made it hard for people that lived outside of Canada to get a grasp and a hold and an understanding of the music. So fully completely, like I said, this was their third album. This was released in October 1992. They started their career with an EP, and then this was the third full-length album. The album had six singles in Canada, the highest one charting at number 10, uh, which was uh, Courage. Um, the album was recorded in London at Battery Studios, and uh, it was produced by Chris, I had to write this one down, Sang Sangarides? Sangarides? Uh, Chris was uh, a new producer for the band for this album. Uh, simply because the first two albums did very well in Canada, but received little airplay uh, down in the U.S. So the idea was to hire a producer who had already had some, some hit albums under his arm. Chris had worked with uh, Concrete Blonde and had a huge success with them. He, uh, he's also worked with Depeche Mode and Judas Priest. So they felt that uh, possibly by bringing in a, a new producer and recording the album in the UK, they might get um, a different sound. But unfortunately that wasn't to be because you could not find an album more Canadian than this album. This album is chock-a-block with themes of Canadiana. Um, the artwork... Uh, was done by a Dutch artist by the name of Liv Prins. And uh, again, very iconic um, in, in Canada. This album was very, very popular for the artwork. 
And uh, this is the reissue. This is the 180 gram vinyl reissue. So let's have a look at that. It's a, it's a single album, but it comes as a gatefold. And on the first side of the gatefold, you get the iconic poster. You get the album poster. And you get, a, I believe there's a download card in here. Yep, there was a download card. And um, this came with two bonus tracks. So that was nice for the reissue that you got a couple of bonus tracks on the download. And then that's the vinyl. Tragically hip on the label. And uh, just a, a really nice sounding pressing. Nothing wrong with the quality of the record. Uh, I don't even think it was remastered. I think it's still just the original recordings. So the album, it's quite a long album. It's a, it comes in about 50 minutes. Um, the songs are not in chronological order on the back. And I believe it goes up to song 11. I think there's 11 songs. No, sorry, 12 songs on the album. Um, so yeah, let's go through some of the tracks. I won't go through all of them, but I'll sort of hit um, what I feel are the, the very strong ones. For most Canadians, this album is gold. I mean, it, it, it just, uh, there's not a bad song on the album, in all fairness. Uh, the hip themselves have a, they have a mix of um, sound. I, I would say sometimes they can be just straight up rockers. Um, they can be quite grungy at times. They, they do get that grunge element um, in, in their sound. Um, they have a couple of great ballads, um, some beautiful uh, guitar work, um, and um, yeah, so they have a, a you know a, a rock, hard rock, grunge, folk rock type of feel to them, and again with these very descriptive um, lyrics. So let's take a look at some of the songs. So the album opens. With a, with a song called Courage, Courage for Hugh McKinnon. And uh, Hugh was a, a Canadian author. Um, I believe he won five Governor General Awards for his, his, his writing. So, and he was a, a teacher at McGill in, in Montreal. So again, uh, you know, talking about Canadian writers, um, uh, um, but just the song itself is... Uh, uh, quite a rocker, starts off the album really good, and um, was one of the six hit singles, um, and, and the highest charting of all, of all six of them. Um, the second song is uh, Looking for a Place to Happen, which has a famous line in it that people like to yell out at the concerts, uh, Jacques Cartier, right this way. So Jacques Cartier, of course, was the French explorer that discovered uh, Canada and um, you know looking for a place to happen that's obviously looking for Canada um, so another great uh, song um, there's a great ballad that's the fourth song on side one called Pigeon Camera it's just got great melodies um, great harmonies uh, just a great song it's the kind of song when they when they play it live, you could hear a, a pin drop in the stadiums. Um, other highlights on side one would be um, what else is on side one? Fully completely, which is the title track, um, which was also um, one of the six singles, and. Yes, the classic at the 100th Meridian. Uh, again, the 100th Meridian is the uh, uh, line of longitude that basically runs separating um, the prairies 
um, from the rest of Canada. And uh, again, the, the famous lyric in the song is at the 100th Meridian where the Great Plains begin. So again, very Canadiana. If you didn't live here, you probably wouldn't know that and you probably wouldn't care. Um, fantastic song though. Uh, side 2 has one of my favorite songs on it, um, 50 Mission Cap. Um, the lyrics for the song were basically taken from a hockey card if you can believe that. There was uh, a hockey player that played for the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, called Bill Barilko and uh, Bill Barilko um, scored the winning goal in overtime and the Maple Leafs won the Stanley Cup and that summer he went on a fishing trip and on the return flight from the fishing trip the plane crashed and Bill, Gar Bill Barilko disappeared and um, the Leafs never won the Stanley Cup again until that summer in 1962, the year he was discovered. Yes, that's how the song goes. Bill Barocco's body was found and the Leafs won the Stanley Cup that next year. So as you can imagine, that, that song is played at every Leafs uh, home game and uh, you know, uh, it, it's, a, it's a very, again, Canadiana. I keep saying that, but it is what it is. And um, basically, the lyrics were written based on the information on the back of Bill Barilko's uh, hockey card. So, uh, if, if you guys can find this album, you know, it's on iTunes. And uh, I should talk about one more song. Uh, again, it's a, it's a nice ballad. And uh, also one of my favorite songs on the album, uh, Wheat Kings. Again, talking about the prairies. And uh, just a, a beautiful ballad. Um, again, something that every Canadian child <laughs> grows up knowing about these songs. So, this is the Tragically Hip. This is Fully Completely. This is their third album. And it's an iconic Canadian album, talking about iconic Canadian themes by one of the greatest poets that ever came out of Canada, Mr. Gordon Downey. And for those of you who don't know, you know, for, for Canada to lose Gordon Downey is, it would be very similar to the U.S. losing Tom Petty or to a Freddie Mercury being lost in the U.K. Gordon Downey is... Uh, rock status, rock god status in Canada, and um, I'm sure he's going to be immortalized um, down the road later this year um, with huge honors um, by our Canadian government because he just is a legendary guy. So this is fully completely. I urge you to try and find it. Uh, there's lots of videos on YouTube. I was watching some. Uh, one of the greatest bands to see in concert. I was lucky enough to see them three times. And, in, and I'm sorry to say, Trigger Boy Vinyl, I also saw them uh, back in the mid-90s. They did a festival with Midnight Oil. It was to save uh, uh, one of the oldest rainforests in British Columbia. And they co-headlined. And I gotta say, the hip blew the oil away. And we know how good the oil is live, so these guys were phenomenal live. So thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to follow this up with some other Canadian classics, but this was the one to start with. Cheers and good night.